This is a step by step guide to run the new model Deep Floyd F on the free tier of Google Colab. So first you can see that we have got a system RAM of 12, approximately 13 gigs. So we're going to run this model on our Google Collabs GPU where you get a Tesla T4 machine. So now what is this model? This model is a new model from Deep Floyd. It's, a, it's, a, it's an organization that was supported by Stability. But we are going to see the tricks, learn the tricks how to run this on the free Collab. If you have access to high-end GPUs, do not use this tutorial. Just use the official demo and run it on higher machines like A100. But if you do not have, you can use this tutorial. There are three libraries, main libraries that are helping us to do this thing. Accelerate, bit and bytes, and also safe tingers. What are the models that are available or what are the components that are part of Deep Floyd If We have got the text encoder, a unit stage one, a super resolution unit stage two. And then finally, we have a stage three that gets the higher or upper resolution, the maximum resolution for us. So what do we, what are we trying to do to run it on Google Colab? We are trying to lower the precision of T5, the, the text encoder, using bits and bytes of an 8-bit quantization technique so that we can fit in the model within the mod RAM that we have got. So we are going to mix and match, like we're going to use some CPU, some GPU. And to start with, we're going to first see the memory that we have got. We have got approximately 13 gig CPU memory and approximately a T Tesla T4 machine of 15 gig GPU memory. So now to install all the required libraries, we can install the libraries. So we're going to use diffusers, one of the most stable diffusion library, popular stable diffusion libraries, and uh, transformers, safe tensors, sentence piece, accelerate, bits and bytes, and torch. So diffusers is from hugging face, uh, the, have nothing to do with this model in itself, but diffusers help us run all these new stable diffusion or diffusion based models. Once you have installed, the first thing that you need to do is, before even you can install, the first thing that you should do is, you need to have a Hugging Face account where you need to accept the terms, uh, terms and conditions of the model. So first click that link, that link will take you to your Hugging Face account. And once you go there, just make sure that you are logged in. If you are not logged in, if you already have a Hugging Face account, just click login and then log into it. Then you need to accept the license on the model card in itself. So you have to go there and accept. Even though this is an open source model, it doesn't let you use it for commercial purpose. And then there are a lot of information that you can read. You have to probably mention certain details here. The biggest catch here is that you need to remember that by accepting the terms of conditions, you are ready to share your contact information, email and username with the repository authors. So if you don't want to do that, you, you, you don't have to absolutely um, accept it. But for you to use this model, it's required to accept the terms of terms and services of condition. And with that, you'll be taken to the model page, go back to the Google Collab Notebook, and then we are going to install Hugging Face Hub. Hugging Face Hub is primarily for us to authenticate this notebook or connect this notebook with the Hugging Face environment so that you can download the model even when the model is supposed to be authenticated or, you know, because you have already accepted the model in itself. So after we have successfully installed Hugging Face Hub, the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to use Hugging Face Hub to log in, so which means we're going to connect this notebook with our Hugging Face account. So once you click login, it's going to give you a link or place where you have to take the token from your Hugging Face account and then paste the token. If you do not have a token already, you can create a new token. But if you already have a token, then you can just copy the token from your Hugging Face account, the profile page, and then paste the token here. So click that link. That link will actually take you to the place where the tokens are available. It's already there. Copy it. Come back and paste it. If it's not already there, you can create a new token with the right permission and then paste it here. Now we are going to start with the model image generation process. All the setups are done. Run the T5 encoder model. So this is the text encoder. We are loading this with the 8-bit quantization that is uh, supported by bits and bytes. You can see load in 8-bit is equal to true, a variant is equal to 8-bit. So we are loading the text encoder with the probably the lowest precision that can help us in run this on the free tier of Google Collab. As you can see, the text encoder loading process is finished. It took about like close to two minutes in the free version of Google Collab. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create the text embeddings for the prompt with the model that we have got. So first, download the model. So you can use the diffusion pipeline and download the model. 
and the previously used text encoder can be directly given here. If you have used a different name, make sure that you give the right name. After that, you have to give the prompt and the prompt here is whatever prompt that you want, whatever text video image that you want to create uh, at the text prompt that can help you create the image is what you're going to give here. If also comes with a super resolution pipeline. So we'll save the prompt embeddings now so that later on we can directly pause it or uh, the prompt embeddings in itself. So we're saving the prompt embeddings as you can see that is coming out of the 8-bit quantized T5 model that we previously had downloaded. Now the first stage is quite finished like uh, the main text embedding part. So now it's important for us to clean up the memory because now we don't need the text part hereafter. The text encoder is not required. So we're going to clear up the memory, remove the text encoder and then start fresh so that we can keep on using the same memory that we have got. So delete the text encoder, delete the pipeline, do garbage, garbage collection uh, and you know everything that you can do to clear the memory so that we can start with the next step of process. Now the stage one after text embedding is the main diffusion process. We're going to download the diffusion model and after we have downloaded the diffusion model, we are going to run this, run this entire thing. So that will ideally help us in uh, creating the first stage, which is a 64 by 64 image. It's a very small resolution image as you can see, but that's how this entire process works where you first build a 64 by 64 image, then you upscale it to 512 by 512. Then you upscale that to 20, 1024 by 1024. Now, as you can see, it is creating the 64 by 64 image by denoising in the pixel space. Once the model is downloaded, we are going to create the 64 by 64 image. That is the first output from the stage one. We are also going to manually convert the raw tensors into PIL so that uh, the pillow format so that you can actually see what the image looks like in the 64 by 64 pixel space. This took about one minute to run and now you can run this script that will help you see the 64 by 64 image. Right click and then open it in the new tab so you can see the 64 by 64 image which is the first stage output. Now all we are going to do is we are going to clean up the memory and again we are going to use the 64 by 64 image and upscale it to 256 by 256. So here if you notice instead of giving the prompt we have used the prompt embeddings because we can use the existing prompt text embeddings in itself. We have the 256 by 256 image clean up the memory and then now use it to change or upscale into 1024 by 2024. Here we are going to use the existing model from stable diffusion we have a 4x upscaler so which means a 256 pixel image gets upscaled 4x. 2x is 512, 4x is 1024. We are going to use that to upscale that image and you can see how the image looks in the 256 by 256 space. And once we use this first we download the model and again we upscale it. The only catch here is that we are not going to use the existing text embedding because this is a totally different model. So that doesn't use the T5 text encoder because it was I think previously built on clip encoder. So now you can use the prompt in itself instead of using the prompt embedding and that's why you give the prompt to pipe and then create the pill image, the pillow image. And uh, by default, when any image is created using this upscaler, it's not going to add the if watermark. If you want to add the if watermark just to show the entire world that you have been creating this using if watermark, then you can run the script separately so that it will add the watermark in itself. As you can see the finally generated image is quite big. It's 1024 by 1024 and you can see the text, the input prompt that we gave. It does text rendering quite well, not very perfect in this case, maybe because we have used the quantized model, but we have got a beautiful 1024 by 1024 image on Google Colab. It does a lot more things than just creating an image. You can do in painting, you can do um, a lot of other things and you can see the sample images. This is really a very good model that can produce high fidelity images with very simple prompts. I am definitely looking forward to explore this model further.